So, Lindsay, this meeting is being recorded. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, busy week, but I'm excited to uh, be here today with our new head coach of the Sacramento Kings, Mike Brown, uh, who, as you all know, is fresh off another championship. Um, but we're excited to get him get him going here. Uh, thrilled to have him. I'd also like to take the opportunity to introduce his family who's here with us today. So Rochelle, Cameron, Elijah, and Zianja, uh, welcome. Welcome to our Sacramento family. So... Uh, as we've said before, uh, we conducted uh, in the front office here a very robust, um, thorough, comprehensive process, um, and we wanted to ensure that we found the right coach. And we did a lot of research. It came down to really, you know, three key things for us: uh, experience, successful head coaching experience, uh, relationships, the ability to build relationships uh, across the organization, and leadership. Leadership as a head coach and. Uh, leadership uh, for everything that we're trying to do here. Uh, we certainly met with some qualified candidates, but um, Coach Brown's pedigree uh, stood out. And um, we are you know, extremely excited, extremely excited to, to bring you aboard. Um, you've coached some of the best players in the NBA, proven winner um, with, the, with the experience, um, discipline, and, and he'll bring a winning culture to this organization. So we're super excited to have you on board, and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Monty. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I'd like to start out by thanking uh, everybody in Warriorland. Um, I tell you what, the, the fans there were terrific. They embraced me from day one. Uh, Joe Lacob, Peter Gruber, Bob Myers, Steve Kerr, uh, the rest of the coaching staff, and I in particular the players. You know, I always think that this is a players' league, and the players that we have down there are very special. So thank all those guys. Next, I'd like to thank uh, Vivek, uh, Monty, uh, Wes. I know he's someplace. Wes is always in the shadow some around. But Wes Wilcox, thank you. Uh, Matina, thank you. And, and everybody else here in the organization, uh, specifically uh, the players, too. I'm excited about uh, being around you guys. So uh, thank you. Thank you all for, for having me here. Uh, and then lastly, I'd like to thank my family. I uh, got my, my two sons, Elijah and Cameron here, Elijah's girlfriend, Z, uh, and my grandson. He's, he's not out yet, but uh, in a few more months he will be. He, he knows what's going on. I prepped him already, too. So uh, my grandson and, and then uh, my girlfriend, Rochelle. So thank everybody for, uh, for this day. Uh, this, this day is very, very exciting for me. Uh, I'm excited about being here in Sacramento. I have a lot of friends uh, that live up this way, and I, I tell you, I, I know everybody's like, oh, this is, everybody says this, but nobody has told me anything or said anything bad about the area. It's been, always been positive, and that's even before I got the job. So I'm, I'm excited about being, what is it, Sacto, Sactown, Sacto, Sac, the Big Tomato, something like that. There are a lot of different nicknames for it. Uh, you. River City. <laughs> Which river? There's two, right? Two. There's two. Okay, yeah, okay, the River City. I like that. Uh, but I'm excited about being here. Uh, the fan base is tremendous. Uh, I, I remember back in the day, uh, them damn cowbells just used to ring in my ear and used to drive me crazy. I hope we get back to that point because uh, now I'd love to hear them cowbells every game. I'd, I'd be the first one raising the roof and telling everybody to get up and ring those things all day long. So the fans, I, I, I'm excited about interacting with them. They're extremely passionate. They're knowledgeable. And uh, I'm, I'm just looking forward uh, to being around them. Uh, I'm excited about the arena. This is a world-class arena. Uh, Vivek, his people, they did a fantastic job of not only developing the arena, uh, but the area around the arena. Throw, throw, throw the practice facility in on top of that. And, you know, you got world-class facilities, not only for current players, but to attract uh, any new free agents that we look to go after. So uh, excited about a lot of things. Last but not least, uh, the people in this organization. Again, starting off with Monty and Wes. I've worked closely with those guys. 
the past uh, couple of weeks, uh, their vision, their work ethic is second to none. I'm, con I'm looking forward to continuing the relationship with those guys uh, in all aspects. Uh, I'm excited about the players. You know, great young core. You talk about young fellas sitting in front here, Avion, Foxy, Sabonis. He, he might get mad at me saying this, the, the old head compared to the rest of the guys, Harrison Barnes, got Rashawn sitting here. I, I'm, I'm excited about this team. Uh, but you know, one of the main reasons that I was brought here was to bring some leadership in a lot of different areas. I've been with a lot of different teams in my 30 years, and I've experienced what I believe uh, is something that can get organizations over the top, not just in one year, but year in and year out, and that's having a winning culture. So my job is to lead in that area. Uh, every organization out there, in my opinion, has a soul, has a soul. And the stronger that soul is, the better that organization will be. A strong soul, in my opinion, equates to a winning culture. And there's three areas that I'm gonna really focus on to get that right. Three areas that I'm gonna lead in to get that right. The first one, there has to be a vertical and horizontal alignment of trust within all the units of an organization. It's not just about basketball, it's business side, it's the medical side, it's the players, it's the coach and staff. There's gotta be a level of trust that's unattainable in most instances. The second area is there has to be a, a set of values. There has to be a set of values on the table that are led and upheld by the leadership of this organization, starting with me. Eventually, it'll get to the internal part of the group, which is our players, too, the leaders within our group of, of players, too. And then thirdly, there has to be an embrace, an embracement of your role. Everybody will understand what their role is. I'm not just talking about our 15 or 17 players. Everybody in the organization, from the business side to the front office again, will know what their role is, and they'll embrace it. And if those three elements come together and come together at a high level, we'll have a winning culture here that's sustainable and long-lasting. I can't wait to get started. Mike, uh, ESPN 1320 James Ham. Um, when you, uh, first of all, congrats on another ring. Um, but when you take this job. Can and, you say that again? Yeah. <laughs> Is that one for the thumb? No, nah, got, we, we got to get one for the thumb. I only got four. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So um, your path to, to this point in your career is ups and downs and roller coaster rides. As a coach, as a head coach, you did amazing things. Um, but what did you learn in this last six years in Golden State that changed you as a coach from what you were before and what that you can bring forward? When you talk about myself, you know, the, the balance that I have uh, being in an environment like that, I, I, I feel is at an extremely high level. You know, I, the feel that I have for a lot of different situations, um, including, you know, the, the pulse of the team, is something that, uh, you know, you only can get through experience and experience with other guys. And so for me, that's it, it's a really big thing individually is uh, that balance is, is there. And I feel like I can bring a lot to the table for our group and making sure we're doing the right thing not just long term, but in the short term too. Coach Brown, uh, Sean Cunningham, Fox Forty. Um, how can you detail maybe just how involved you were or weren't during these last few weeks, month, if you will? In, in, involved with the, with the Kings? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I can now, you know, because we won it uh, <laughs> after our Dallas series. Uh, one of the things I did, I jumped on a plane. We had a day off. I jumped on a plane, flew down to San Diego, uh, watched De'Aaron Fox work out, took him to lunch, him and his family to lunch, spent some time with one, of, one or two of our coaches, Luke Lox, that was down there, uh, and then headed back to the airport, 
uh, jumped on a Zoom with Rashawn <laughs> and his agent and a couple other people and then flew back up to uh, San Francisco. So uh, I, I've, been, I've been heavily involved. I talked to every single player on multiple occasions. Uh, some of them I talked to in person. Uh, some of them I talked to on Zoom. Uh, same with, with the staff that's, uh, that's still around. Talked to them on Zoom. Talked to them on the phone multiple times. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, Monty's wife, she's, she's a great lady, but uh, she may, every once in a while, she may get a little irritated with him because I think he answers my calls more than hers. Uh, so. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> smart man. I, to I told you he's smart. I told you he's smart. Great answer. But no, uh, it's, we've, we've been, uh, I've been heavily involved. Hey, Mike, Chris Tavares, Fox 40 here in SAC. How much pressure do you feel to end the, the elephant in the room, that 16-year playoff drought here? And how much was that discussed during the whole interview process? There ain't no elephant in the room. You can speak on it. Uh, I, I'm, we're going to embrace that. I'm not coming here to, quote, unquote, have fun and be excited and join the area. I'm coming here to win. So we're going to embrace anything that's in front of us that uh, talks about winning. Uh, so we look forward to it. Coach Brown. I'm sorry about that. Tony Harvey. Um, well, I'm going to speak on it. Um, speak on it. One of these, and no, you know, no shade on you know, Rashawn or Davian because they're great uh, defensive players. Uh, and it's been going on for like years. Just want to get your, uh, uh, your thoughts, your philosophy, strategy, or anything that you could provide for the Sacramento fans about defense. Defense has been a uh, Pretty much uh, um, the black hole, of, you know, the nature of this uh, this organization. I know a lot of people that came in and tried to change the culture in that too, okay. But as far as your value and your trust and you know the other things that you talked about, where do you begin on that? Well, the first thing is without throwing a system out there to our guys, uh, I'm gonna preach from day one. They got to have communication, they got to give effort, and they got to trust one another. On top of that. You throw out a defensive system that fits for, for this group, and you have a chance to be pretty good. People look at Steph Curry, Belly, Otto. I said Belly because I've been with him. I still don't know how to say his whole name. But Otto Porter, uh, Jordan Poole, Wiggins in, 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 uh, in Minnesota. Uh, I mean, I can go down the line uh, of the quote-unquote personnel that we quote-unquote have with the Warriors and people did not think that they can defend. And somehow, some way, we ended up the number two defense in the league. Now, will we be that next year? I don't know. Uh, probably not. It's, it's going to be a process. But I'm excited about all the guys. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, I, I had that young man over there, Foxy, and, and when he was in high school at an Adidas Nations camp. And you know, obviously, I walked away with, with his, impressed with his speed. Uh, but I thought I thought he was a dog defensively, and you know he is who he is because he earned it. So there's going to be a lot of pressure on him coming from me, not anybody else, to get back to what I know he can do on this level, night in and night out. So I'm excited about all of this, you know. And then we got the young fellow right there that's going to do his thing too. So I'm excited about all this. But it starts at the head of the snake, and uh, those two guys up there, for me, great to have. Hey, Mike, over here. Deuce Mason, uh, welcome to Sacramento. Thank you. Um, what made this the right spot for you? Like, it's been a minute since you've had that full-time coaching gig. What, what makes this challenge one you're ready to tackle? I, the potential here. I, you know, I, I, I truly believe the potential is off the charts. Uh, it gets me excited thinking about it. And, you, you know, trying to maintain my composure, excitement while going through uh, what we went, what we experienced the last couple of months was tough for me, uh, but again, you know, being around 30 years, you you, you feel like you, you can find a great balance to do different things at different times. So the potential here is off the charts. Uh, the players here, I'm excited about. Uh, like I said before, Monty, Wes, uh, Matina, I, I'm excited about working with those guys and the rest of the organization. And and then the reality of it is, uh, you know, I'm I'm excited about. Everything that's going on here, from the building to the facilities, I, every time I walk through here, I'm blown away. They did a fantastic job with, with the facilities. And then I, I'm, I'm ready to get out into the public, you know, ready to touch the people here in Sacramento 
and uh, give back to, to the people here for being so passionate and loyal to, to the Kings. Mike here in the back. Uh, Andrew Hodmer with CBS 13. You talk about the everyone in the organization, basketball operations, knowing roles. Golden State's an organization that it seems very integrated vertically, right? Right. What is it about the conversations you had with Monty, with the VEC, that makes you feel like the short, mid, and long-term vision of this organization is aligned in a way that you wanted to be a part of? Well, you just feel that everybody here uh, gives ownership to the people that are around. You know, it's not my way or the highway. Everybody wants the best way. And whoever came up with that idea, you know, high level, mid level, low level, whatever you want to call it, uh, we're going to roll with it. And, uh, you know, when you have that type of feeling from your group, in my opinion, the sky's the limit. Mike, Jason Anderson, Sacramento B. Welcome to Sacramento. Thank First you. of all, if you need a barber recommendation, I got you. Um, <laughs> second, I, I uh, that. what what can you uh, what can you teach the city of Sacramento and this this franchise uh, about planning and executing a, a championship parade? <laughs> well, I, I, I and I, I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this. I I, I have I, I was able to take some notes yesterday because I really couldn't turn up like I wanted to because this dang on press conference today. <laughs> so if you really want to know, uh, just speak to me afterwards. A fantastic time. I mean, it, it doesn't – it just gets better every single time, and yesterday was sweet for sure. Hey, Coach Brennan Nunez. Welcome to Sacramento. Thank you. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, what was this whole process like for you, hiring your coaching staff, and uh, what's in, what was most important to you for the different people that you bring on, whether it be seeing eye to eye or various opinions, pre-built relationships, things like that? Uh, that and everything above. I mean, I, I wanted a diverse group, and you know, we're still in the middle of trying to put that together. But uh, I've hired my first, second, third, and fourth assistant. Uh, my first assistant, uh, Jordy Fernandez, I've known him for seems like forever. Um, I brought him in the league from Spain, I don't know, 15, 16, 17 years ago. Uh, and, you know, he's had an opportunity to interview for some head coaches. But uh, he's a guy that understands the international game and understands the NBA game in the same breath because he's coached both at a high level. Uh, Jay Triano, same thing. But he's a former head coach uh, in, on the international level and in the NBA level. So <coughs> he's great. Both those guys can coach both sides of the ball, but uh, Jay, to, Jay, to me, is, is fantastic on the offense end of the floor, and Jordy is fantastic on the defense end of the floor. Uh, Doug Christie, he, in my opinion, he's a staple here. Uh, what a lot of people don't know is, is we played against each other in college uh, back in the day. And, uh, you know, our junior year, I put the handcuffs on. Well, hey, that's how you do it, Dave. Dave, is that how you do it? You like that? Like that. I put the handcuffs on him. Like he had like, I don't know, 15 and 17 those two games. You know, he was probably averaging 24. Uh, but you know, senior year, he I think he had 58 and 42. <laughs> His senior year, he did well against me. We'll just leave it at that. But that junior year, if you want film, we can go back and watch that together. <laughs> And then uh, Luke Laux, uh, Luke was with me in uh, Golden State. He, um, he was player development coach there. We, we, we got real close. We talked a lot of basketball uh, a lot of different times. And then this past year, he spent, uh, spent a year with the Phoenix Suns. Um, and so to bring him on for me was, was a no-brainer. Two of those guys also, I was head coach in the Nigerian national team. And Jordy and Luke worked closely with me uh, on, on that staff as well. Hey, Mike. Matt George, ABC 10. Welcome to Sacramento. Thank you. In addition to the, the young core that you've already talked about, the exciting core here, it's draft week, the fourth overall pick uh, that the Sacramento Kings have. How excited are you to see what Monty and his staff are able to add to this core this offseason and implement that uh, into next season? No, I, I, I'm, I'm excited. You know, the, the draft's going to be a fun time for all of us. Uh, I hope the city of Sacramento uh, is just as excited as I am. These guys are going to do a terrific job. They've been working their tails off. Uh, they're very knowledgeable about about the draft and, and everything that comes along with it. So uh, I'm looking forward to it for sure. 
Monty, uh, number one, who are you taking at number four? <laughs> Secondly, this is your first time getting to hire your own coach. No disrespect to Luke or Alvin or anyone else. This is your first time as a GM. What was this process like for you and, you know, the outcome? This is clearly what you were hoping for. Yeah, no, it, um, you know, we, we set out, you know, we sat here a few months ago and, and talked about it. And um, I think you guys are, are figuring out I'm pretty process oriented. And so we, we set out exactly what we wanted our process to look like. We, we spent a week, you know, <clears throat> taking a huge list and whittling it down to uh, what, what ended up being seven. And we said, we're going to talk to those seven. Uh, we're going to hear their vision for the team, um, see what we think. And then we're going to narrow the finalists to, to a smaller number. And, um, and then we're going to sit down in person with them and, you know, we're going to go through each set, um, you know, each gating process along the way. And, um, you know, I think it became clear uh, at the end uh, that Mike was was exactly the guy that we were looking for. Checked all the boxes. And um, so, you know, I think I always feel more comfortable, uh, whether it's the draft, uh, free agency or, or coaching search when we go through a process and we get to the end and uh, and the answer is, is there for you. So, um, you know, it was it was a, a fun process to go through. Uh, we actually, Coach and I, uh, were on a panel at a conference like six years ago and had forgotten about it. So we did have a little touch point before, but mostly getting, <coughs> getting to know Mike uh, through the process um, was fantastic. Monty, along those lines, uh, bringing him up to speed with the draft and kind of the process that you're going through, how much do you lean on him, that expertise, and, and try to use him as a sounding board along with pretty much all your staff as you go into Thursday? Yeah, well, we have a great staff. A lot of them are here, um, putting in the hours uh, here in our front office. And, you know, Mike's uh, unfortunately been tied up with some other stuff, but we've stayed in touch, um, you know, almost daily on on what's going on here. And, you know, obviously being in sync, we talked about the alignment, making sure that alignment's there every day um, on, on what we're planning uh, with this team as we try to try to get back into the playoffs. So, um, you know, Mike, I think, has, has been in – he's coached some great players. He's, he's been – uh, head coach, assistant coach on some fantastic teams, and so certainly his guidance on on uh, how he can utilize players, you know, how he envisions the team playing. Um, you know, we've been in lockstep, and so we should continue to have those conversations as we get closer and closer to, to draft night. Yeah, Coach, uh, on the topic of the De'Aaron fox DeMontis sabonis pairing, what do you think that they do uh, really well right now, and what areas do you think that they can continue to improve as their careers continue? Well, well obviously, you know, as a – as a tandem in the pick and roll, they're very, very good. Uh, they're not probably a top through top two, a top three combination in the league right now. Uh, so that's a given. Uh, now you couple that, like I said, with with, with Fox's speed and uh, Sabonis' ability to pass, and it just it just gives you different ways to play. <clears throat> you know, you got a lot of different ways that you can play the game of basketball. And I'm a firm believer in paint touches. And you can get paint touches a lot of ways. You can put Sabonis on the post, and he can facilitate from there. Uh, anytime you get a paint touch, you, you collapse the defense, so he can facilitate from there. And then you can also spread that floor out and tell Foxy to get in that paint and finish and or distribute. And so uh, I, I, I'm, I'm excited about uh, those, those two guys and doing a lot of different things offensively. Monty, um, I won't get all into the uh, – Candidates, you know, that you had lined up and stuff. I just wanted to know, uh, at least the fans wanted to know, at what point, what was the definitive point that you said, you know, Mike Brown is our guy during this process? Yeah, I don't even know if there was a definitive point. We, you know, we got through the end of our, um, you know, our final round of interviews and, and we sat down and we talked through it. And I think as we went through our checklist, you know, I guess maybe that was the point where it was like, I mean, this guy, this guy checks all the boxes and he's, you know, he's, he's one at a high level. He's coached fantastic players. Um, he's coached top 10 defenses almost his entire career as a head coach, assistant coach, um, had some fantastic offenses. So all that stuff just kind of lined up. And, um, you know, I think at that point is probably when it became the most apparent. And just real quick follow up, uh, can you explain, you know, the trust, the value, when it comes to you during that process? For sure, that was probably the first thing uh, that that Mike said when we uh, when we sat down for our first interview, and um, you know I think we're we're aligned on that, and that's you know what he's shown that he is about and what he can do. All right, let's go to Zoom. Dave, go ahead. Hey, Mike. Uh, congrats on the job, and congrats on the growing family. Um, being an assistant coach with a team like the Warriors that have had so much success has got to be 
one of the more stable gigs out there. Um, and, and in this business, that's not necessarily uh, something that comes part and parcel with these jobs. Why was this Sacramento opportunity the right one for you uh, to leave the Warriors organization? You know, I, like I said, I, I, I'm excited about a lot of different things. I mean, shoot, look, I, I got on a gray suit. I got a purple shirt, purple and black, you know, pocket square. My girl's got on a purple shirt. I mean, you, you got to be able to feel the excitement coming from me about being here. And, again, it, it just the potential, the potential of, uh, of the players on the roster already. And, you know, a few of them are here. Uh, just Monty and Wes uh, what I feel about those guys uh, leading lean our group as well. And, and then just the city of Sacramento. I mean, there, there, there's, there's just a lot of opportunity here uh, for this place to explode, and I, I want to be a part of it. We get you in that suit on the sideline next year, or you back in the money look? Well, I, I tell you this, you, you remember, if you think back in the day three years ago, I was nice on them sidelines. <laughs> now, now, it was a lot of work putting all that stuff on, so I'm, I'm comfortable with this look. But if we go back, my game will be there. Trust me. <laughs> all right, let's go to Jordan. Hello, Coach. You speak about a winning, uh, a winning culture and your three contributing factors to achieving that culture. Was there a defining moment in your, in your career where you decided about those three contributing factors? Uh, it, it was just you know, something over time, being with the different organizations, uh, and, and, you know, you can learn in a lot of different types of environments. And I, I've been fortunate, blessed, lucky, however you want to call it, to be with some fantastic people, to be able to learn from some, some fantastic people, not just people on staff, uh, but also players. You know, I, I've learned a lot from some of the players I've coached in the past. And, and over time, you just start to form, form what your philosophy is uh, offensively, defensively. Uh, away from the court, on the court. You just hope that that all of it mesh, meshes. And, uh, and, and so I, there, there wasn't a specific time that it, that, uh, that has come together for me, uh, but it's, it's definitely how I feel right now. Christos. Hello, Coach. First of all, congratulations on your new step. We realize from your shoot how good this beat is. So I would like to ask you, uh, you were you were being around win now teams during your career as a coach. Do you feel that the Sacramento Kings of the next season is a win now team? And how excited you are to lead this team through the playoffs? Not, like I said, I, I'm here to win. You know, first and foremost, and I'm going to embrace that. We're all going to embrace that. Uh, so <clears throat> the excitement level uh, for that is is here, and I don't think it's any different. For any other team, in my opinion, that I, that I've been with, you know, regardless of the record, regardless who was on on, on the roster, uh, it, it's about winning. And when, when you taste that, it's addictive, and and you want more of it. So uh, that, that's the way I look at this right now, going forward. Hey, Mike, just you've done it before, taking over as a new head coach. What are some of the challenges, regardless of what you're walking into, of taking over as a new head coach and a shorter off season? Yeah, you know, it seems like, uh, you know, I guess it was in four of the six years with the Warriors, you know, our season ended about this time now. So I uh, didn't have a ton of time to prepare for the following season, but it, it, that's part of it. Uh, the biggest thing is, is like I said, laying down uh, the right foundation of, of a winning culture going forward. That's going to be huge. And then, you know, j just talking about different things from some of the Organizations that I've been with, uh, that, that were that, that were great in the in the past. There's there's always trying to you know there's always a competitive spirit that uh, everybody has within the organization that that you want to make sure uh, exists here or that you can bring about uh, on a daily basis here. Uh, there was always a connectivity uh, within the organization. Uh, again, not just from the player standpoint, but players, medical staff, front office, uh, coaching staff, uh, that, that everybody embraced and, and knew that when you hit tough times, that connectivity uh, would help you sustain. Uh, there was always a, a level of appreciation of the journey 
that it takes to be great. Uh, there's an appreciation of the process or the steps, and uh, there was an understanding that you don't want to skip any steps uh, along the way. And then, then la uh, lastly, uh, there, there was a focus, uh, a level of focus uh, throughout the course of the, the year, uh, starting right now in the summer and then carrying over to training camp, carrying over to the beginning of the season, the middle of the season, after All-Star break. There was a level of focus that uh, <clears throat> all those groups or teams or organizations had uh, that was unmatched because we, we all know that you know the first 20 games, everybody's excited, everybody's bringing the juice for the energy. Well, where you at game 45? Where you at after, after the All-Star break? That's when the tr true champions really peak or step up. And so those are some of the things that, uh, again, I want to start working on now as well as building that culture the right way. All right, thank you. Thank you.